Well, this is our Sunday night hour of power, like we said last week. I'm not sure we go a full hour, maybe like 40 minutes, but uh, it's a once, a, once again time for our 6 o'clock Sunday night service at Grace Harvest Church and the beautiful city of Holiday, Florida. <laughs> it is beautiful. Yes. Palm trees and the beach is nearby that we can't go on. <laughs> but uh, um, praise the Lord. We're not talking tonight about what we can't do. We're talking about what we can do. That's right. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens <laughs> us. Amen. Yes. And I got a, in a real Pentecostal tent revival mood today <laughs> for some strange reason. So I thought I'd play a little organ and we'd sing some happy songs. Amen. Good. Our theme tonight is Touching Jesus about how your faith can reach out and touch touch the Lord and and um, and receive what you need uh, from the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. And here's an old song from the 50s, <laughs> from the Healing Revival. Uh, Jesus is on the main line. <laughs> Tell him what you want. Amen. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
shouting your shouters broke <laughs> and for all of my word of faith friends I do understand that the battle was over with Jesus but we enjoy singing that song anyway praise the Lord can't take it away from us hallelujah well I'm pretty punchy tonight I don't know what that means it's Sunday night I'm very relaxed <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, you know what? Where you are, just worship with us. Amen. Shout, praise the Lord, and glory, hallelujah. That's and, right. Uh, and uh, have the victory. <laughs> just have it, because Jesus got it for us. That's really true, that the battle was over at Calvary. 
But we do understand that uh, we have a wrestling in this life, don't we? Yeah, oh yeah. And it'll be a great day when we don't have that anymore. Okay. <laughs> and we're all in heaven shouting and rejoicing. And, yes. And uh, we'll all laugh about how the devil thought he was going to defeat us in 2020 with the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was reading today, you know, the Bible says, the gates of hell shall yes. not prevail yes. against the church. Yes. And uh, Jesus said, I will build my church. And he's building tonight, right now. He Can't is. Can't stop no, the building no, no, of the, no, no. Building the body the of Christ. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God's a good God. And uh, he's, you know, he's working all things for our benefit Amen. to help us. And he's not the author of sickness and disease. No. He's not the author. Of, you know, you're thinking about that just a minute because it's kind of a healing thing tonight. Uh, just have that on our hearts mm -hmm. about touching Jesus. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people from different kinds of, I suppose, th theological backgrounds, uh, they get confused, uh, Pastor Scarlett, about the sovereignty of God, you know, and that, you know, uh, <laughs> Brother Hagin used to really make people a little ticked off at him about some of the things he said about songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For example, back there in the mid 60s, early 70s, I think every, every uh, traveling college, Christian college choir did a rendition of He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Oh yeah. And uh, people love that. And uh, Brother Hagen got up after somebody sang that one time and he <laughs> said, well, if he's got the whole world in his hands, he sure made a mess of it, hasn't he? <laughs> now that can cause theological, you know, defenders of everything bad is God's fault, folks. Yeah. They can get into a huff over that, can't they? Oh yeah. But um, you know, he is he Jesus is Lord. Yes. And God is God, but we have authority too, you know. Oh yeah. And we have a choice. Yeah. Um I was thinking also about what Brother Hagen would say. Okay. He said, some man said to him, uh, you know, God can do anything he yes. wants to do. And Brother Hagen said, no, he can't. If he could, he would make you tithe. I know. <laughs> Don't you love it? And the guy got under the pew. The story goes, the guy got under the pew. He got so embarrassed because <laughs> he shouted out. I'll tell you what, if you speak out in any of our meetings, you're fair game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have mellowed through the years, <laughs> but there's, you know, I'm still in the process, I guess. <laughs> well, we certainly don't want to just, you know, argue for argument's sake, but we certainly want to defend mm -hmm. the finished work of Christ. Yes. And, you know, and Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did. You know, there's not, uh, I, I read something that I think, um, I think it was Spurgeon had said that he drank Jesus drank every drop of that bitter cup. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, he prayed in the garden, yeah. uh, let this cup pass from me if there is any way. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And Jesus drank every last drop, uh, uh, any moisture or whatever in that cup. He drank it all mm -hmm. and left none for us to drink. There's, none, there's no bitter cup for us to drink. He, he did it. He paid it all. Um, he he finished the work. He the the, the uh, theme of tetelestai, uh, which is a Greek word for uh, it is finished. And how the the question is, well, how finished is it? Well, mm -hmm. it's as finished. I'll tell you, that's an important question. How finished is the finished work of Christ? Mm -hmm. It's so finished that it could not be more finished ever. In other words, it's as finished as it will ever be. And it could, and as finished as it ever could be. That's how finished it oh, is. Isn't glorious. that wonderful? It is. So we're going to not blame the Lord for all this. I just cringe when I hear that because, um, you know, God's not the author. If this is not confusion right now, mm -hmm. you don't even know in your town. We have to look it up all the time. Are we supposed to be driving around at all or not? Can we go to the store? Some places they're saying, no, you know, you have to stay in your home and have everything delivered. And, mm -hmm. and uh, in other towns, it's not so much that. And it depends on, you know, the, what their 
viewing and seeing. Yeah. But um, that sounds like confusion. I think there's a yeah. lot of confusion right now. Well, well yeah. God's not the author of confusion and troubles and trials and and uh, making bad things happen. No. You know, He is a good God that loves us. Uh, um, Pastor Scarlett, one of your great scriptures that you teach on from prosperity teaching mm -hmm. is uh, Third John two and. Yes. Uh, Remind us what that says. Well, it says beloved, and I just like to say be loved. Be loved. Because, you know, we Love need yourself, to, please. We need to receive that. Be loved. Beloved, I wish above all things that you yes. prosper and be in health. Yes. Even as your soul prospers. E even as that. And, uh, and so soul prosperity, what would that come from? How would we increase that? Well, definitely through renewing the mind and, and the word yes. and what Jesus has to say. Yes. Really, I think the, we should get to the point where any subject we hear, we should automatically, or the first thing that could, should come into our minds is, you know, what would Jesus say about that? Yes. Or what does the word say about that? And that's that's kind of know when, know, you know where we are with our soul, yes. with the, the growth in yes. our mind. You know, our will and our emotions. Yes. Well, you know, you just can't go wrong with certain key things like the Word, number one. Yeah. Prayer. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Faith. Yeah. Using your faith. Acting your faith as much as you can. Sure. Um, praying for direction. You know, this is, this is a time, uh, you know, faith is not prideful because faith works by love and, and love seeks not its own glory or anything like that. So a lot of people right now, I've heard, I've heard some pretty cavalier statements also on the other extreme as, well, just go and, you know, get as close to people as you can and almost prove that you can't get sick. Well, that's the other extreme, isn't that? Just, oh, yeah. That's just not faith at all. That's pride. That's look at me. Actually, it's not far from snake handling, to be honest, because mm -hmm. it's like, well, I can handle this snake, and, it, and, and if it bites me, I'll shake it off in the fire like Paul did. Um, and so that's a, some proof of faith. You know, the devil uses that against people with their faith. He, he even used it against Jesus yeah. and where he went to, um, you know, in the temptations of Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, if thou be the son of God, uh, you know, cast yourself down from the pinnacle of the temple and uh, the highest point, mm -hmm. which would have been suicide. And Jesus, uh, you know, rebuked him and, and, and um, you know, told him, that you don't tempt the Lord. That's right. So we're not out trying to tempt the Lord or tempt our faith or show faith muscles. No. We're just... We're just believers walking in the word like everybody else. Uh, you know, we had made the decision, and we just talk, talk openly about this. We had made the decision, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago that we were just going to plow ahead and have church and, you know, forget it all. Uh, but then when the government, uh, a, a, um, a local pastor uh, at a church nearby had called me, and, and he was asking me, well, what are you, you guys going to do about your service? And I said, well, we're, I didn't answer him yet because I wanted to hear what he had to say. I said, well, what are you doing? You tell me first what you're doing. He says, well, we were going to just have church. But he said, um, in the building, everybody come and believe God, you know. But he gave uh, the, uh, the uh, Church of God, the general overseer actually gave uh, a very balanced teaching on this. And said, uh, well, there's, you know, you don't just take one scripture and go out half cocked with mm -hmm. it. You have to, to try to look at a balance in the, the, the whole counsel of God. And he said, uh, Ro uh, Romans 13 talks about us uh, submitting ourselves to the government, to the, literally to the government. To, That's right. Now, if the government said, mm -hmm. no longer teach and preach in his name, or no longer gather to meet, or don't pray, well, we would have to defy that well, sure. because that we put the gospel first. Yeah. But this is not that, people. Uh -huh. And uh, if it became that, we would we would all, you know, take measures and steps to to disprove that. But no one is saying that. No. And uh, so, if we can do, if we can help the government, if the church should be the first ones that the government could call on to be honorable. Yeah. 
and to be respectful. That's right. And so in the name of, of uh, Romans 13, we are following, mm -hmm. amen, yeah. those scriptures. And then there were some other, you know, le legal things and all that we, you know, con re involving insurance and that sort of thing. So anyway, there's just no need in, you know, the Bible says neither give place to the devil. That's right. So why would you do that? <laughs> I just don't <laughs> get it. So, you know, hey, to each his own, everybody can do what they feel led, but this is what we felt led to do. Yes. And I trust that you who are members of, of Grace Harvest Church um, are enjoying these services. Hey, you know, you can watch the past. Somebody said <laughs> that there's benefits to having church online, and one of them is uh, you can go to church in your pajamas. <laughs> And then another person said you could have popcorn well. during the service. And somebody else said you could mute the pastor if you don't like what he's saying. <laughs> I bind that thought in the name of Jesus. You may not mute. If you mute, your finger will fall off or something. <laughs> you can mute me. You cannot mute Pastor Scarlett. There's a special place in hell for muters. <laughs> commuters I don't know you know <laughs> you know you might as well laugh it's true you know the merry heart do good like a medicine That's right. we could have that service oh lord that could get out of hand with Scar Scarlet and I right that would be an hour of power an hour of something <laughs> an hour of chaos maybe <laughs> but I think we all I think in some ways you know not being uh, not 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 taking this serious yeah. But on the other hand, there's a time to laugh at the devil, isn't yes. there? And you oh, say, yeah. you thought you were going to destroy the church and destroy the American economy and government and peace of our nation, mm -hmm. and you're a liar. Amen. He's, He's a, a liar. liar, isn't he? That's right. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Mm -hmm. And um, that's for sure. Anyway, we're talking tonight, we'll get back to basics here, about touching Jesus. And I thought about, um, I want to give a little credit to my mother, Jerry Horton. She was... Uh, she is. I think she might be watching tonight. If you are, hi, Mom. We love you. I yes, <laughs> miss you. Me too. But um, uh, my mom was a person uh, that she always knew how to touch Jesus in her prayer life. Oh yeah. And um, and she she'd get a hold of she'd get a hold of heaven pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And I remember being a kid. We were talking about healing, and this goes with our lesson tonight. Uh, but I, I remember uh, we were living in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. My dad was a state official there for the denomination. And um, I was at home a lot with, with mom and, and my sister. And um, I had some kind of, I was a, just a boy. I had some kind of a weird, kind of like a planter's wart type thing. Uh, which can get, be very deep seated and can really dig into the tissue um, on my on my foot. I don't I don't remember exactly which which toe it was, but uh, on one of my <laughs> big toes, you know, and uh, it was it was it was uh, starting to it was growing and it was getting bigger and it was starting to cause uh, irritation and, and and pain. It was very itchy kind of a thing and just driving me a little wacky, you know, as mm -hmm. a kid and affecting my walking and, and ability to play and, 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 and be normal. And so I uh, remember showing it to her and, and uh, said, I'm having a problem here. And so she thought, well, let's go to the doctor and just see what it is. So we did. And they, they did ran some tests. They said, well, if it's just a planter's wart, we can do some radiation treatment on it and it will zap it and it'll be gone. Well, it, they did all the treatment they could do and it, 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 it was still there and it had not decreased in size or anything. And they said, okay, well, this tells us that it's a certain kind of growth and, and problem. Uh, not like a tumor, but just some kind of a wart type thing that was really a problem. Yeah. And, uh, and they said, it, it will continue to grow. There's nothing we can do. We can't you know, do surgery on it or anything. And uh, it'll eventually get to the point that he'll have to have special shoes made, you mm -hmm. know, for, for that one foot. And uh, so I remember my mom thanking the doctor for the information. She was very respectful. 
we drove home to the state overseer's parsonage that we lived in there. And I remember her asking me to sit on the edge of the bed. She took my sock and shoe off and she said, looked at me and she said, now David, listen to me. She said, the doctors have said there's nothing more they can do. But she said, but we are in touch with a higher power. Mm -hmm. And she said, Jesus can heal this thing. Praise and she God. says, I'm just gonna curse it in the name of Jesus. So in other words, we were touching Jesus, right? Yeah. We were reaching out with faith and with our authority and touching Jesus. And she said, um, "You're this thing's gonna wither and, and die in Jesus' name. And she, um, she laid her hand around my toe, you know, with her, with her hand and, and she cursed it in Jesus' name. And she put my sock and shoe back on my foot and said, go out and play with your dog. And did you know that my mother never asked me another time, let's look at that, see how it's going. This is what people do and they lose their faith because mm -hmm. they're looking for the confirmation to come from the physical. Yeah. And her confirmation was the word of God. Yes. You know, the action was faith and prayer and authority. The confirmation is the, the, the living word. Mm -hmm. And um, so she cursed that thing. And uh, I don't know. I, I kind of tried to ignore it as best I could. And um, just days later, um, I was I was running around barefoot or whatever, you know, like kids do. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that my, my, my toe was normal. And it's been that way ever since. And they said, there's no cure. You'll have it the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And uh, I remember telling mother, I went, ran in the kitchen, I said, hey, look at my toe. My, the toe, the fig tree thou cursed is withered <laughs> away. But I said, look, the, my toe is normal. And she said, well, of course it is. And she says, when we touch Jesus, you know, everything is, is changed. Praise the Lord. And um, so that's kind of our lead in mm -hmm. to a story that's very familiar here in Mark. Um, Five. Let's turn there, and uh, we'll just address this tonight. Amen. Yeah. I'm enjoying these sessions, aren't you? They're yes, very much. They're good. I do miss the fellowship of our congregation oh, and we miss you. live services. We miss all of you. Yes. Uh, Mark five. We and we do pray for you. We That's are right. praying. We yeah. are praying for you all. And, and uh, Horton Ministries partners, we're praying for you. Yes. And uh, we're just going to get through this, folks. Amen. This too well shall end in Jesus' name. Uh, Mark 5, uh, 25 is a very strong story. Um, and a certain, it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had was nothing better but rather grew worse now see that sounds like a lot of people right now yeah i don't know what they're spending but there's certainly a lot of people are spending all they have just living because they're not working mm -hmm. so there's that but then also nothing better but rather grew worse going to the doctors and mm -hmm. you know i something was said on the tv a couple nights ago about that they're applying compassionate care to a lot of these patients, which just simply is another word for palliative care or hospice type. Mm -hmm. In other words, make the patient as comfortable as possible until they go. And that's about where she was at, because she had was nothing better but rather grew worse. Yeah. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Mm -hmm. And uh, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Well, you could say that tonight, couldn't you? Yeah. If I can just touch, because you know, I know there's a lot of people, a lot of you that are watching that you don't have coronavirus or the symptoms, but maybe you've got something else mm -hmm. you're dealing with. Maybe yeah. you're, you're dealing with um, arthritis or mm -hmm. cancer or, or something, right? Yeah. And I know there's people in our church that are dealing with maladies and illnesses. Sure, yeah. And um, some of it's chronic and has been there for years. But why not just touch Jesus during this yeah. time and just, just, we've been spending, I talked to one of our friends yesterday on the phone and we, we've all been spending time, you know, reorganizing the houses <laughs> and, um, you know, we've been doing some yard work and just a few little things 
cleaning house. What about if we cleaned house spiritually too? Yeah. Something that's a lingering, nagging thing. Isn't that the truth? Just clean house and yeah. get rid of it. Now will be a good time. You have time yeah. to deal with it. Yeah, you, you know, do. You don't have to just sort of faith on the run. You could actually right. sit down and take time. Yeah. Say, I'm going to deal with this thing right now. And get in, rid of it. In and Jesus' she, name. She had it 12 years. So it's a, that's a long time. And I think sometimes people, even if they're not getting worse, yeah. just putting up with it for years, you yes. think, oh, well, it's just this. I yes. Can, but um, like David said, let you know, get rid of it. You don't have to have yeah. it. You don't have to have no. a hassle of it. Um, Jesus no. died and paid for it. Yeah. We're not supposed to live this life, on, like Brother Hagin said, on barely get a long street right That's next right. down to Grubble Alley. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> And uh, we don't have to barely get along physically either, where we're no. barely making it out of the chair to the kitchen, to the car, to the church, to the store. You know, right. we can we can be strong and whole. Yes. And she said, I shall be whole. She didn't mm -hmm. say, I shall, you know, live another two weeks or, you know, be better. Mm -hmm. She said, I'll be whole. Yes, whole means uh, no, nothing broken, nothing missing. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the Bible concept of perfection is there's there, everything's intact and working yeah and it says at straightway the fountain of her blood um was dry when she, the minute she touched him and she had said this thing uh straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up she felt and she instantly felt better yeah i believe you can do that tonight oh yeah i believe it too sometimes we we think, uh, you know, that it might take a while, even with yes. the Lord involved. Yes. But it doesn't have to. Yes. I mean, right. it, it can be immediate. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Plague. Now, does, when have you heard the word plague or uh, pandemic, <laughs> uh, the plague of 1918 or whatever? Yeah. Uh, you can be healed of the plague. Amen. <laughs> And feel it instantly. Yes. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power mm -hmm. had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? I want to say something about the Calvinist idea of, of well, are you on the healing list or not? You know, uh, uh, I've heard people say it's interesting who God heals and who he chooses not to and you ever heard that stuff? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, there's like this choosing. But this woman got healed and Jesus didn't know who she was. That's right. I, I don't know about the predestination people, what they do with that verse. I guess, I don't know what you do with it. Because it says here, who touched my clothes? Mm -hmm. And so he didn't know. Yeah. And why didn't he know? If if she had to be specially chosen, do you see what I mean? Right, yeah. For, uh, predestined for a healing. Why didn't he know who she was? Exactly. And he's looking to Good see, point. you know, where, where, where. So you know what that tells you right there, that verse? Faith will work for anybody. Mm -hmm. That will work it. Yeah. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me, is a little bit of, uh, it's an interesting approach because they were like, kind of like saying, are you okay? I mean, what's wrong? I mean, why would you say that? Everybody's touching you. There's a there's a throng, a, a multitude thronging you, yeah. touching you, and you're saying, who touched me? Well, half the town's touched you. <laughs> but he meant, who touched me with their faith that it was strong enough to um, pull the power out of Jesus yeah. that would touch her, her malady. Mm-hmm. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. He's trying to find her. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Now look at this. And he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a daughter or a son of God by faith. Mm -hmm. He That's said true. because of her faith, he counted her as a daughter. Yeah. He didn't check to see her pedigree or <laughs> which group she was a part of. Check her Sunday school record. <laughs> Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole, nothing broken, nothing missing, of thy plague. 
my goodness, how many times, and it breaks my heart when it happens, but how many times have we had a healing line in some service and people get half a healing almost, mm -hmm. you know, they limp out or they drag their leg yeah. <laughs> or whatever out right. the door. Mm -hmm. And we are encouraging them and so keep standing. But here she was instantly made whole. And I yeah. believe that that's the standard that we should be um, reaching to, whether we see it or not yeah. all the time. Yeah. So what? It's still in the word. That's right. And it's important. Um, yeah. Well, here's my big uh, statement on this tonight is and strong, I believe. If her faith could make her whole, mm -hmm. why couldn't your faith make you whole? Yeah. Would you like to tell us how you could use your faith? Because Jesus isn't walking through the building right now right. with the robe where you can see and physically touch it. Sure. How do we spiritually touch them and get the same result? Well, I think it, she gives us some ideas here because um, she, uh, her first action was that evidently she heard that he was an he a healer. Yes. Um, and we know that because she started saying something about yes. that. Yes, yes. So I believe she heard the word yes you know, about jesus about and he of course he is the yeah. word john chapter one says yeah that's he right is the word made flesh um so we know that uh she heard the word and then she began to say what she desired what she wanted and um and how it was going to happen so it was a declaration of faith yeah um, because she said the minute i touch you know i'm paraphrasing but the minute i touch yeah. his clothes I shall be made whole and that was her decision and that's when she was sick and getting worse yes in the natural she's in the worst shape she'd ever been broke and sick. broke and <laughs> sick and broke sick and broke <laughs> so it was, that was, it was a bad situation but she's but she began to say you know so I think that uh, faith connection was her believing in her heart and saying yes. with her mouth yes and we can do that still uh, because we know Jesus is in our hearts. Yes. He's here. He's yes. with us. Yes. And um, we can make that same connection with our heart and our mouth. You know, when, uh, when Brother Hagen, uh, I remember Brother Hagen teaching on this quite a bit at healing school in, in, in Tulsa and in, in meetings. Um, he always pointed this out. It says when she'd heard of Jesus, well, what had she heard about Jesus? Mm -hmm. And she apparently heard the right thing. Yeah. She did what? Well, let's talk about what she didn't hear. <laughs> she didn't hear, because I just want to dig at this. <laughs> okay. uh, she didn't hear. Well, he used to heal, but he doesn't do it now. Right. He quit. He quit. <laughs> the, the, the dispensation ended, and sorry, you're too late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she also didn't hear. Well, it's his will to heal some people, but it's not others. Right. And you have to know if you're on that list or not. Right. And I guess try it and see if anything happens. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then you just know you you were on the the bad list instead of the good list. The reject you were on the reject pile instead of the. It's so ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? When you really put logic with it, it yeah. does it falls apart instantly. Yes, it does. And uh, you can scream sovereignty all you want, but right. here we have a sovereign God who has given us the word. Yeah. To, and why is the story in the Bible if it's not for our edification? Yeah. Because, um, once again, I'm just so impressed with the fact that whatever she heard about Jesus gave her courage and mm -hmm. faith to say and to do these things. Right. Amen. And he didn't say, he didn't even know she was there, actually. But, you know, he didn't say, you got to clean up your life first right. before you can get healed. Yes. You know, if you've ever said or done anything wrong, repent right now before you can get healed. You know what I mean, right? And uh, so qualify, qualify. Yeah, you got to yeah. qualify yourself yeah. for this. And um, his blood's qualification, his enough, blood, yeah. isn't it? His blood. Um, a very famous Bible teacher, um, whose name I won't mention because some people really don't like this guy, but he, I, I think God uses him. <laughs> no, I won't tell you who it is, even, <laughs> even if you private message me. <laughs> But he was on vacation. He was teaching, you know, he was teaching on all the finished work of Christ and what all God had done. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, I thought you wanted to be, a, a, you know, a teacher of grace and righteousness and finished work. And he said, well, I am, Lord, I am this. And he said, well, why, why do you 
keep trying to make people qualify for what Christ has already qualified them for. Mm -hmm. And he repented of yeah. that and said, I'll never do that again, Lord. I'll mm -hmm. tell so people good. they're qualified. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that there's people who teach, well, you know, you, there's all these steps you need to go through to, to uh, um, get in a position to be healed. And I got to thinking about that. Well, now healing is from sozo. It's from salvation. Yeah. There's only one redemptive work. There's mm -hmm. not three. There's not a redemptive work for, in other words, Jesus didn't get on the cross, die, get off the cross, get up, die again, get off, get right. up and die again. You know, well, I got to die for the salvation. I got to die, I mean, for justification. I got to die for healing. I got to die for prosperity. It was one thing yeah. and one one action, one Lord, you know, one gospel, one Bible, one Holy Ghost. There's not a separate Holy Ghost for each mm -hmm. action. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when he did this, when he did this finished work, um, the only the only thing that a person needs to do, according to Second Corinthians five, seventeen down through twenty one there, the only thing they need to do is believe it. Yeah. Just receive it. He he has qualified us to receive his blessings mm -hmm. uh through uh by using faith. Yeah. So the the cool thing here is well, the, the thought is, well, I got to get in a position to get healed, which usually means I got to think of everybody that I maybe there's somebody I haven't forgiven. Well, it would be a good idea to forgive them. Oh, the sure. Bible has a lot to say. We could have a whole session on forgiveness. Right. But um, if we're not careful, we, we're trying to work for something yeah. that Christ got for us yeah. on the cross. Right. Our healing was provided. Isaiah prophesied it, you know, hundreds of years before it sure. happened, right? Oh, yeah. And Isaiah said, uh, uh, by his stripes, we were healed. Mm -hmm. So this idea of, well, I got to get in a position to be healed. I got to be clean up. Now, let me tell you what that is like. When I got, one, oh, one of these sessions, we're going to talk about what it means to be filled with the Holy Ghost and yeah. what all that is the blessing. But when I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit back before the Titanic went down, <laughs> many moons ago, I um, was 10 years old I, and I wanted to be filled with the Spirit, you know, because our group, you know, we emphasize getting filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Thank so God. I, wanted, I wanted it really bad. And it was so funny because you get down in the altar and you'd have these sisters come pray with you, you know, bless, you know, bless them. They meant well, but they would say, now, is there any sin in your life? Is there, any? so you're going on, on this sanctification cleanup tour to get ready to receive this blessing. And, um, um, you know, you, you can't sanctify yourself. No, you, it's, that's a work of the blood. Mm -hmm. And so, I wish they would have told me, you're in the clear, you're sanctified, you're saved, just receive. Yes. I wish they would have said that, but nobody did. And so I was tortured <laughs> at the altar till about midnight. And I finally, I think, almost passed out. And finally, just by relaxing, I think I got, you know, it came easier. <laughs> and when I, Hikimo Shan died and spoke in tongues, I was thrilled that I was filled, but I was also thrilled that the torture was over. I'm sure. And uh, the all the effort, and I put so much sweat equity into that thing mm. that it was almost like, oh, thank God you only have to go through that once. Yeah. But you know, if we're not careful, even in our enlightened hour here, right. uh, we'll start applying that same stuff to people yeah. to get a healing right, or to get their bills paid. Yeah. Well, I'll go back and check your tithing record. Did you ever miss a Sunday? Oh, well, you yeah. can't receive a blessing. You know, this, before you know it, we are working, working, working to receive uh, what we can only get by faith. We can't bring our good works to the cross no. and receive anything. And the danger is the devil will always tell you you're doing something wrong. What you're lacking. <laughs> I mean, some little comment 15 years ago or, you know, yes. on and on and on. Somebody you slighted because or Because he doesn't want you saved or healed right. or 
or prosperous or you know or so anything. He'll, so he will lie and uh, tell you yes. that there's things there still, even though you've gone over your list. So it's just ridiculous, isn't it? it just yes. never there's there's just no way that we can save ourselves or heal ourselves by our works. Well, let me it's ask you. It's the work of, on the cross. Yeah. It's Calvary. It's it, it is it's looking at Jesus. At finished at something finished. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this: What would I do to get prepared to get saved? Well, yeah. See, see, now that is the big question. Yeah. Getting in a position to get saved. Yeah. Now, there's plenty of people that will help you try to do that. Oh, yeah. Give up cigarettes, you know, stop cursing, stop whatever. Right. And then you can, you can be saved. And it's like, well, no, you need to change first. And then all those things, deliverance or whatever that you need will follow yeah. that. Right. You, you, you don't. Clean up first, then get saved. No. Well, let me tell you this. You don't clean up first and get healed either. No. And you don't clean up first and, and get blessed. You need to count yourself as God has made us holy. Amen. Uh, the, the song uh, that we sing sometimes, uh, Lord, I Need You, says, uh, holiness is Christ in me. There's a definition. Yeah. Christ in me is holiness. Yeah. Why is it that way? Because the Bible says that uh, even in the old temple worship, the only things that were cleansed were sprinkled with blood. Mm -hmm. If the blood didn't touch, like if the priest did it wrong and um, uh, you know did the ceremony wrong and somehow missed sprinkling the instruments of the altar uh, and the altar with sufficient blood, then it was considered... Um, impure mm -hmm. and would just uh, despoil the whole thing yeah anyway i said all that to say that we have been sprinkled by the blood yes thank god and uh, we've been we've been washed in the blood of the lamb yeah and so i think for a holy ghost meeting maybe we ought to sing have you been washed in the blood of the lamb yes. and if you have then you qualify for the baptism you qualify for healing. You yes. qualify for all the blessings That's of right. heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So, um, I think that's enough preaching and teaching. What do you think? Yeah. Would you like to add? Well, I just w would like to pray for people. and Let's and do then, that. Um, you know, just uh, align your heart and your mouth, yes. your mouth with... I just believe I receive it right now, Lord, when, yes. when we pray. And let this be your point of contact this time right yes. now, that this is the time yes. that you receive, because he's already done it. He's already provided it for you. But this is the time that you receive it. And you can say right now, uh, March the 29th, at whatever time I receive yep. my healing, thank God for it. And, uh, and just keep that in your mouth, you know, just yeah. keep those words of life there. Let's just make this a little healing altar call. Amen. And if you need healing, reach your hand towards the, the screen you're watching. You can touch it if you want as a point of contact. And, and uh, you know, we're connected here with you. You can put your hand where you're suffering if you'd rather do that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to anoint yourself with oil, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever sure. you need as a point of contact. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' Thank name, Jesus. Uh, Pastor Scarlett and I just come yes, before you. you Lord. And Lord, we are not in a position physically to lay hands on the people watching tonight and those that might be watching later. But by faith mm -hmm. and vicariously, we reach out our hand yes. of faith and we say, be healed yes. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now you reach out with your hands of faith and you touch Jesus. Close your eyes if you need and imagine that you're there and you're and he's walking through and you're reaching out and touching him and you touch him and, and let his, and just open up and let his healing power flow into you. Yes. In Jesus name, Jesus name. I command blind eyes to open, Amen. deaf ears to unstop, yeah. lame legs to walk, cancers and tumors and growths yeah. to wither and dry up, uh, arthritis to wither and dry up, Amen. Uh, viruses and bacteria and, and uh, bacterial pneumonias and those things go in yeah. Jesus name. In name Jesus. Uh, demonic darkness, um, oppression, depression, leave That's right. the people. Weakness, leave. Pain, go yeah. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Be healed and whole. 
from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Amen. Now just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, thank for healing you, me. Thank you, thank you for touching me. Thank you, thank you that your virtue is now working in me. Yes. If you can, do what you couldn't do before. If, you, if you're in a position to a uh, place where you can stand up and walk. If you couldn't walk, walk. Yeah. If you couldn't Amen. see, look and see. If you couldn't hear, listen. These are the things we tell people in our That's crusades, right. especially overseas. And yeah. uh, it'll, Jesus is Lord over America, just yes. like he is <laughs> South America or somewhere else, right? Yes, Africa. He is. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then write us and tell us what the Lord has done for you tonight. Yeah. We would love to hear these testimonies. Yes. Now, we would like to receive our offering tonight, and so uh, uh, I encourage you, if you're a member of Grace Harvest Church, continue your tithing, your giving, worshiping God. Yes. Amen. That's right. What's well, one way to beat, beat fear out of it, where if you're yeah. afraid of your finances, continue to give, and, and it'll, it'll defeat that yeah. fear. Don't you believe oh, that? Oh, absolutely. Jesus name. Yeah. And uh, if you're a partner of ours, or if you'd like yes. to become a partner, um, we, yeah. we would love for you uh, to partner with us and uh, we yes. we'll partner with you all, as well and we prayer. go all over the world and preach mm -hmm. don't we yeah <laughs> not we this do. week but <laughs> we're stuck at home like but you <laughs> we will as soon as they open the, <laughs> the gates. flood gates <laughs> yes we'll be the first ones at the airport <laughs> but I want to tell you um, that uh, you can give several ways um, and all those ways are, you know, I mean, any way possible you can give through texting, through yeah. um, PayPal. Uh, there's ways you can give on the websites now. And you can also mail in a check. Yeah. Um, go to graceharvest.net and you can see all the ways to give there and then um, press all the right buttons and you'll, you'll see how to do it. Yeah. And then you, if you're a Horton Ministry partner, go to hortonministries.com. And you'll find the same information there. All yes. right? Yes. So, uh, wow, until Wednesday night, we have another exciting session. It's, it's going to be good Wednesday it, night. It, it's going to be good. We've yeah. already talked about it. What we're going to do, yeah. <laughs> 7 o'clock. All right. Uh, we love you. Yes. We're praying for you. Please pray for us. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, have a great Sunday night. Amen. Bye-bye. Yeah.